YouTube, YouTube, YouTube is Rico, man. Back with another video. Y'all see what we got going on, man. We got London's Pots, Cold Wars, Knife Games taking over the capital. Now, y'all know what time it is, man. Today's video, I decided to go to a different country, man. I decided to go explore the game, crime, crime violence, and all type of stuff in another country as far as the UK. Now, y'all know what time it is, man. We got a lot of people... That pretty much like seeing people react to UK based stuff as well. Um, Cause what a lot of people realize too is the new drill wave that's going on right now is you basically UK drill type beats and stuff. So that's why you all see people like Pop Smoke, Fabio Foreign, uh, Two Two Gs, a lot of New York rappers starting to use UK drill beats and stuff. So y'all already know we gotta at least do a video where. We exploring the UK, actual UK based um, gangs and stuff going on over that way. Um, yeah, man, pretty much that's why we here. So, brand new to the channel or you been subscribed to the channel or been watching videos on the channel, I should say, not subscribe. Hit that subscribe button right now, man, if you haven't already, man, because y'all know we on the ground of 5K. And also, don't forget to leave a like and comment on the video to help this video get recommended to a larger audience of people and hopefully bring in new supporters to the channel. Other than that, man, y'all know what time it is. And also, before I forget, tell your friends and family about us and tell them to come check out the channel and subscribe and do the same things as well as like and comment on the videos. But now y'all know what time it is. So without further ado, let's get the screen record started. That started and we finna start this video now. What's up guys, it's Kid Nerd here back with another video. And today we're talking about London's knife crime problem. I'm sure my UK viewers know about what's happening in London, but today I'll be going into depth about how serious the problem really is. But before we get into the video guys, please be sure to subscribe. We're trying to hit 20k by the end of the year, and also turn on post notifications for new content coming real soon. Now, when most people from outside the UK think about London, they probably think about royalty and a bunch of old people drinking tea. But and I ain't gonna lie, when I really first heard about the UK scene, like, I pretty much felt like it was more like, pretty much a different, I don't know how to explain it, it's just different, like, like I'll just leave it at that, it was pretty much different, like, we already knew it was gonna be different, like, when we hear about UK, London, we automatically know it's another country and stuff, we know that things are different over there guns is definitely stricter to come across over there um that's why a lot of uh, the crime that goes on involves knives and stuff stuff like that like crazy stuff because people over there they literally stab people up man y'all know that's one of the worst ways to get killed and hurt by somebody is to get stabbed by a knife because that's pain that sometimes you can have a higher chance of surviving more than you do getting shot. I don't know. It might be the same because if you get stabbed and you get stabbed in the wrong area on the body, you could definitely die instantly or stuff like that. But I feel like it's more brutal. It's more crucial. And the pain, you can definitely... It's like you just got that sharp pain at the end of the day. Like people always say, it feel like this part of my body is getting stabbed and stuff like that by little needles and stuff so imagine a big blade literally getting lodged into your body and stuff like that so it's definitely one of the most brutal ways to get hurt or killed over there and like i said it's harder to come across guns so a lot of the crime and violence that goes on over there has to do with knives being used and stuff but um when i thought about it I knew it was probably dangerous over there, too, just like I said with the crime and stuff. But I also knew that 9 times out of 10, they had gangs and stuff going on. They had drill music and stuff going on. And they had a lot of beefs going on over there as well, just like in the U.S. So that's why, too, we seeing a crossover between London rappers and U.S. rappers and stuff. Um trying to make waves and stuff on in each country at the end of the day. You seen what happened to Pop Smoke when he got blew up, sold out and did a tour uh, uh, in the UK. And a lot of people in the UK really rocked with his music and stuff. So 
when he came back to the States to do shows and stuff as well. A lot of people mess with his music and stuff. So his popularity is not just U.S. based, it's U.K. based as well. And a lot of people rock with his music. So that's why a lot of rappers in New York started doing the U.K. drill because these beats literally are coming from producers in the U.K. and stuff. So that's why a lot of these rappers in New York is shining too and going crazy with the new sound. So I'll give that much credit for show to the U.K., man. The U.K. definitely plays a role in today's U.S. rapping and stuff like that, hip-hop, whatever you want to call it, and why a lot of people is making a lot of money and getting huge fan bases off of it. So shout out to the UK for sure. They definitely have some uh, influence for sure in the music today, period. This is far from true. London actually has a very big gang problem, built by something called Postcode B. Postcode is literally just areas, and whatever postcode you're from pretty much defines you in London. It's kind of like zip codes if you're American. And in the bigger spectrum, there's something called boroughs. There are 32 boroughs that make up London, and boroughs are essentially just bigger areas which hold up these postcodes. Obviously, there are a few boroughs in London that are not really that affected by knife crime, like Rich and the Kings and the Pontames, which if you are looking for the stereotypical white rich people drinking tea, you'll probably find that there. But on the other hand, we have boroughs like Newham in East London, which is one of the most impoverished areas in London. Newham has had a long-going postcode war, which has literally divided the borough into two sides, North Side and South Side Newham. North Side are built up with the postcodes E15, E13, E7, while South Side is built up with E6 and E16. This divide started in 2009 when a boy called Stephen Lewis was stabbed to death outside the party in the borough. Stephen Lewis lived in the E13 postcode, while his killers lived in the E16 postcode. This then left the remaining postcodes in the borough to pretty much pick a side, and the whole borough has been at war ever since. One murder that really ignited this beef recently was a 14 year old called Corey Davis. A Range Rover circled the park twice in the E7 postcode before aiming a shotgun at a crowd of boys, including Corey. The boys started to run away, but Corey froze up and was shot in the head, while his other friend was shot in the leg. Corey grew up in council houses, which are pretty much house. But yeah, and when it is guns involved, it's basically the same in the U.S., man. You get killed the, the crucial way, the most brutal way and all. Because guns, period, take down anybody and everybody, man, at the end of the day. Some people are lucky to survive, but most people aren't so lucky. And if they do, sometimes they also have stuff wrong with them, like getting paralyzed from the waist down. Or just paralyzed in general for some reason. Wherever they got shot at, it messed up them in a way. But, um, yeah, man, they definitely going crazy in the UK and, and how they do stuff over there, for sure, man. It's just crazy, and you would never really think when you don't really know of the hood lifestyle and stuff like that, the street lifestyle and stuff, you would never think stuff like this is going on in another country like that. So it just goes to show you, man, violence is everywhere, and... Gangs and everything all exists everywhere and goes crazy. Um, and the beefs, if you're in a certain country, of course, you're going to know more about that country's beefs than you do in another country. So when you look at UK drill and stuff like that, they got a lot of gangs and a lot of beefs in the music industry over there. And they're doing about pretty much the same things that you would expect in the U.S. So it's definitely crazy in the U.K. for sure. If you live over there, you for sure... If you a person that never lived there a day in your life, you got to do your research for sure when you go over there because you don't want to end up a victim over there and not have knowledge of the gangs and the most notable people that control the gangs and the streets that way as well. So pretty much you got to look out for videos like this to get your knowledge up and stay safe, man. If you ever decide to live over there or travel over there and visit, stuff like that, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Some of them places we already know, the main places is France, London, the city of London, but in the good parts of them and stuff like that, of course, where the Eiffel Tower or whatever it is called is and stuff like that. So well, those are the most actual known places that pretty much people go to because it's a, a tourist attraction and stuff like that. But if you, like I said, living over there, you're nine times out of ten not going to literally live where the Eiffel Tower and stuff is and stuff like that. You might have to live in one of those boroughs and stuff like that. And, yeah, get accustomed. But you got to have some knowledge, period. If you go over there with no knowledge, you're going to get ate up easily. 
houses for low-income families provided by the government. So his family would not have much of a choice on where they would be placed, and more than likely it would be in a high-life crime area, like E7 where he lives. This shooting was a retaliation hit from Southside members, after one of their members called Young Diz was shot and stabbed 16 times, but managed to survive. Young Diz actually made a drill song called Kermit after CJ was shot in the head to mock the situation. He also made a very rude verse in the song called Smokey Things, when he said, It'll kill my tunes down to mom kept shedding tears. Somebody tell her. And if I'm not mistaken, I, I could have swore he said this dude just survived a gunshot and being stabbed over 16 times. That just goes to show you how brutal it is to live over there, man. Because when your people can't get their hands on a gun, knives will be used. And knives, they you be using, yeah, you're going to be in for one of your worst days you would ever wish you probably wasn't alive, period. If you get jammed up and have something like that happen to you, that's just crazy. I don't give a fuck that a son ain't here. Ever since a son got dropped, the whole block ain't done shit. And I was laughing when I saw the pick of a mum just bury a kid. Which is quite worrying considering this guy is 23 and he keeps on dissing a dead 14 year old. Kind of like the Tuka situation in Chicago. Young Dizzy's real name is called Isaac Donker and he's currently serving 12 and a half years for a kidnapping and torturing a 16 year old drug dealer after he ran off with his drug supplies. Young Diz filmed the teen on the Snapchat while he was kidnapped with plastic bags over his head and forced him to strip while being badly beaten up. Young Diz would actually recruit a lot of these young people to do a lot of dirty work for him. He would target kids as young as 13 from a nearby borough called Barking and Dagenham and would buy them food and give them money to do criminal activities for him. He even made a set of youngers called YACG which stands for Anyone Could Go. These teens are mainly from the Barking and Dagenham borough but they rep the E6 postcode where Young Diz is from. So we even have kids... And this just goes to show you, too, in other countries, the youth is heavily influenced by the streets, man. Because the street life, it always seems like most of those guys start when they're super young, man. 15, 14, 16, don't matter. That's still super young to really be a part of the street life at the end of the day. So, just goes to show you, man. Everywhere the youth is pretty much getting messed up by the influence and the society they're surrounded by, man. and that's just sad. Like people gotta really think like as an adult, where are the parents, where is the family figures that's adults that should be mature and smart and trying to basically give them other ways to live a life without resorting to being in the streets all the time and stuff and trying to be in the gangs and stuff like where's more of those people at like where are they and it's just a sad thing that it's a basically a long lasting problem that will never be solved at the end of the day because even the adults sometimes are encouraging the young and the youth etc cetera, etc cetera, to be a part of gangs and the street life and stuff like that because some of them too as well grow up as a youth and that was their life too so it's like a never-ending cycle at the end of the day kids from the outskirts of london that are willing to kill for an area they don't even live in deaths like Corey's have now left young teens in each area wanting revenge for their friends that have now died causing them to get involved in this beef when half of them don't even know how it started not only this but all the people in the areas will guilt trip and groom youngers to go and retaliate back for their dead friends and this really is a never-ending cycle because each death just brings new young people into this feud even recently in april a young nhs worker was stabbed to death in the e16 postcode after being suspected for a member of the Southside durham gang so it's even getting to the point where people can't even walk their streets anymore after a certain time. Because if a gang sees them on the ride out, they're stabbing first and asking questions later. You don't even have to be involved at this point. But before we get into all this, let's go back to the origins of gang culture in London. During the 1950s after World War II, an influx of Jamaican immigrants started to move to the UK in hopes of a better life. They were called the Windrush Generation. And this was basically the UK government's plan to help rebuild the UK after World War II. This allowed Jamaican immigrants to find work in the UK but also opened the doors for a lot of Jamaican drug traffickers who found a new market to sell their products. This created a surge in drug users in the UK, and in the 80s, Yardley's gangs were starting to form in major cities in England. These gangs set up something called County Lines. County Lines are essentially just trafficking drugs into rural and more smaller towns in the UK. So a lot of these gangs that were in London would send members from their gang to start selling drugs in smaller towns in the UK, pretty much just to find new customers. And this still goes on today and is a major, major problem because most of these people that would be sent out are kids as young as 11. Older gang members from the area would groom the kids with little bits of money and gifts 
which would then be used against them later for favours, like sending them out to sell drugs. These drug operations started causing frictions, so often there will be many tap for tap killings from these Yardi gangs to protect their drug lines and their territory. In the 90s, these gangs started to become area based, and an early example of an area gang would be the Tottenham Mandem, who operated in North London in Tottenham. They had beef with the Hackney Boys, who are based in North East London in the borough of Hackney. That beef was going on for quite some time, but now both gangs have split into many little gangs that now beef each other. The Hackney Boys are completely split and have around seven different different gangs that have been branched out of it, which obviously all beef each other for whatever reason. And the Tottenham Mandem are now split into a few gangs in the Tottenham area, but the main two are OFB and MPK, which some of you have probably heard doing drill music. OFB are from the Border Farm Estate in Tottenham, and the MPK are from the Northumberland Park, which is literally five minutes away from each other. OFB and MPK have had a very on and off relationship, but even recently they used to be heavily linked. This all changed due to a murder case of a rival gang member from Wood Green called K1. The OFB and MPK gang rid out in broad daylight with their bicycles to their rival's area outside the cinema complex in the full sight of civilians and stabbed and shot cable and if i'm not mistaken y'all comment down below if i'm right or wrong but i think mask and stuff is mostly used a lot more out there because of the simple fact they got a lot more on um, cctvs and stuff and i know it's a lot of footage we can find from the uk during crimes um being committed where it's all captured on CCTVs and stuff. So I feel like, too, that's why over there you you will see a lot of those gang members and stuff using masks and stuff like that in their music videos and stuff or when they're doing interviews because the mask over there, due to the CCTVs that's widely used in that country over there, it can capture so much and it will waste no time for police over there to figure out who committed the crime and stuff like that so i feel like that's why they wear masks majority of the time when they doing stuff because they don't want the cctvs to pick up the footage and all that stuff and yeah but that's how i feel when i see all these masks being used in music videos and interviews and stuff from uk based rappers or gang members and stuff like that etc etc but comment down below below if i'm wrong on that he went dead in front of the crowds. Here's a little footage of the carnage that happened. And also to the gloves thing, the gloves thing is heavily used over there. Like there, when they doing music videos as well or interviews, you see a lot of them having gloves on and stuff. And a lot of people might be wondering why they wearing gloves. I feel like because that it's pretty much like hard for people to dispose like dismember a knife and stuff and get rid of the blade and the handle part so some of the stuff they got to do is mostly with melee weapons at the end of the day so easily anybody could pull a melee weapon and see all right yeah this person's fingerprints was found on it etc etc so i feel like too that's why a lot of them wear gloves all the time and stuff like that just so don't nothing like that come back to them at the end of the day After this, four MPK members and one OFB member was arrested and put on trial for the murder. The OFB member was actually an up-and-coming jewel rapper called SJ, and just before he got sentenced, he was really starting to show some traction, with co-signs from Drake and over 10 million views on this song, which is very rare from a new drill artist. It turned out that one of the MPK members actually snitched on the rest of the members, and they were all sentenced to life in prison. Which is even sadder when you find out all these people that were sentenced were under the age of 18, with the exception of one. This situation turned into many sneak disses from OFB and MPK members on social media and drill songs. It was basically a game of few snitch. MPK was saying OFB snitch and OFB was saying MPK snitch. This all heated up when two OFB members got stabbed by MPK members in a barber shop in Tottenham. MPK members are quick to hit social media mocking the situation, especially due to one OFB member hiding in the toilet and leaving his two other members to get stabbed. And just like that, a new beef has now started in London. Now the situation has turned physical, OFB can't just try and bless it with the MPK members because now they'll be seen as victims and not serious. And this whole gang life is literally just about image and integrity. That's literally what it is. If you want to act 
accurate outlook on London's street life. Listen to Lowski's song called Life So Deep. It literally explains how the gang life seems all good until stuff gets real. And Lowski's gang, Harlem Spartans in South London, are a good example of how gang life can go 0 to 100 so quickly. In 2016 and 17, Harlem Spartans were having the years of their life. They dropped tunes like Kill It and Where It Started, which is now on 16 million views, which is very rare for a UK drill song. Not only is but they were actually doing drills. They were really doing what they were rapping about and causing quite a storm to the ops who was in Brixton, South London. They were also making money in the track, serious money, and like most gangs in London were involved in county land operations. Now obviously with all this attention they're drumming up, the feds were starting to clock onto them. These times Harlem Spartans were doing numbers on YouTube. Lowski, who pretty much set the platform for the group with his songs DJ Khaled and Hazards was in jail for some gun charges. Oh yeah, and if you didn't know, guns are illegal in England and possession of a firearm could get you a max sentence of 14 years. And that's why I was saying early, I know gun, um, guns ain't mostly used to commit crimes over there and stuff because it's very strict over there to have a gun and stuff like that. So if you commit crimes nine times out of ten, you're mostly going to have to commit it with a knife or a blade or some sort, period. This makes guns quite scarce in England, and most guns you will find will probably be very rusty guns from World War II, or shotguns which farmers are permitted to own. That's the reason why knives are a more popular choice of weapon. But can you imagine if guns were legal in London? I think it would definitely be one of the most dangerous places in the world. I just want everyone to really just... And they already going crazy with just the knives, so you definitely don't want to add a lot of guns to that mix, period, because there's going to be a, even what more shootings and all type of crazy stuff going on, so... Yeah, man, I, w I could definitely only imagine how bad it would get even more if guns was able to be used and easily accessible and stuff like that for the communities and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's crazy, man. Definitely don't even need that really add guns to that mix, period. Think about how tapped you have to be to stab someone 20 to 30 times. Like, I really do think it's a mental illness, but it's so normalized in London. So, after Lowski, the next member of the rap group to go down was TG Million. He was arrested shortly after releasing the hit song Call Me a Spartan, which is on around 10 million views right now. TG Million was sentenced to 12 years for stabbing a rival gang member after a high speed chase on his ops block. He has seen freestyling often on his Instagram talking about how much damage he's done to the ops. But the gang life doesn't just stay on the streets of London, they follow you to prison as well. There's a video of rival gang members, including jewel rapper Burner from Clapham. Junction, absolutely destroying TG Million in prison. Like, I won't show the video because it is quite graphic, but you can easily find it online. And you almost can't even recognize him in the video, that's how badly damaged he was. And it's tough because most of these gang members end up in jail with their ops, so there's literally no escape on road or in jail. And most people go to jail and leave with more beef than they came in with. We even see link ups with different gangs in jail, like the North London gang Wood Green linked up with the East London gang ACG in jail, and now they have inherited their beef inside and outside jail. Honestly, I don't even know how these gang members keep up with the beef they have, like. It seems like some of these gang members in the areas were just beefing half of London, which is just stupid. But anyway, back to Harlem Spartans. In 2017, shortly after releasing their most popular track, Ken and Warren Stein, their two most popular rappers, Blanco and Miz Mac, was arrested in a cab while riding on their ops with a samurai sword and a gun. They got three and six years, but are both out now. My man said they got arrested with a samurai sword. That just shows you, man. They going to huge lengths to do what they got to do to get their job done at the end of the day, man. That's crazy. Imagine seeing somebody with a goddamn samurai sword on the streets trying to come after you. I ain't even gonna lie. That's more crazier than seeing somebody come after you with a gun. Because in UK prisons, you normally do half the time you're served for good behavior and just to clear out the prisons quicker. Yeah, but this put the group on hold for a bit musically, but the beef was still popping as ever. In 2018, it all really started kicking off, and in May, Harlem Spartans affiliate GB was shot dead while playing football in the park. He was only 17 years old and was from a group called Moscow 17. These guys are literally from an estate seven minutes away from the Harlem Spartans block. Harlem Spartans and Moscow were still grieving the loss when two of their members were riding out on their ox block for revenge. A Harlem Spartans member called SA spotted some rivals in the car and drove up close and aimed his gun at them. The gun jammed while trying to shoot and he was stabbed in the chest and died on the scene. He was then pushed off the ped by the Moscow member and left to die. Three months after this, Moscow 17's leader was stabbed to death in the same location where the other member GB died, which is even more ironic because Incognito was there when GB died. And rival gang members even said the bullet was meant for Incognito and wasn't even meant for GB. Just before he got murdered, Incognito actually beat a murder charge. He was arrested for the murder of a Zone 2 affiliate called Abs. Zone 2 are their main ops, and Incognito raps about the murder charge in a song called Blessed. So now 
Ohio and Moscow just lost three members in four months, and they were really starting to get mocked by their ops heavily. And even fans were starting to comment on Harlem Spartans members pretty much saying, ride for your dead friends. But the thing is, all these fans think they know about what's going on in the streets from drill pages and songs, but they really don't. Not even the slightest. They even think all these deaths and stabbings are just fun and games, but don't really understand that mums are crying and lives are ruined from the videos. The Harlem Spartans are going on an absolute rampage after this. Harlem rapper G Smarco ridden on his ops block on Halloween and shot a rival in the head. He was then sentenced to 21 years in prison. Another member called Jug was jailed for 10 years after stabbing a 30 year old man in the head, leaving permanent brain damage. Harlem were on another ride out to the ops block when members GG and Scratcher were caught and arrested and sentenced to 10 to 5 years for possession of a firearm with intent to cause danger. Things got worse than Y'all comment down below, what's more brutal? Getting shot or getting stabbed? Because getting stabbed, I, I would say, is more brutal. Get stabbed anywhere on your body, that's brutal. And then on top of that, that person that's stabbing you probably got to stab you 10 plus times to really put you in the point where you finna die. Because when you stab somebody, you, you're, you're more than likely got to stab that person multiple times to really put them in, in danger of losing their life because if you stab them in certain parts it's not going to have that much effect but except make them bleed out maybe and stuff like that and cause never ending excruciating pain until they get treated and stuff like that but if you get stabbed in the head I feel like you don't even instantly die getting stabbed in the head that's how I feel I feel like you're gonna feel that for a little while then you might possibly die like maybe like two minutes later probably probably in a minute but that minute is gonna become a long minute at the end of the day than it would as a bullet because once you get hit by a bullet your body immediately goes into shock and an adrenaline rush and stuff and you might move around and not feel anything for the moment but once that stuff wears off you might ultimately die right then and there or you might feel the pain and then die after that but getting stabbed i feel like you gonna feel that for a long minute compared to getting shot period worse when their most popular rapper Lowski was caught with a firearm in the cab and was arrested for possession of it. This left the rapper Biz to be the only one to hold it down for the group, but he was stabbed to death on December 6th last year. And it's even sadder that before Biz died, he wanted to turn his life around and turn legit after he beat some charges at the end of the year. But there's so many examples of people who joined the London gang life and tried to leave, but failed. A great example of this is an ex-MPK member called Kobe. MPK is the gang that I mentioned earlier who had beef with OFB. But Kobe started to change his life around and he even started to be an advocate for helping people get out of knife crime. He was stabbed to death by MPK rivals even though he left that whole life behind him. So there really is no escape unless you move to the other side of the country. But even then you could get caught by county land trappers from London. But these are just a few examples of gangs in London. Now London knife crime has escalated a lot since 2015 and everyone is stuck wondering why. Is it the community centres closing down? Is it gentrification which is making London so unaffordable for low-income families or is it the rate of stop and searches going down around london now my opinion on the matter is someone who's seen the first-hand effects of knife crime and as i said before this is my personal opinion and i think it's drill music there was a clear trend of when drill music started to take off in 2015 when knife crime really started to increase now these drill songs are literally glorifying stabbing and shooting people and making it seem like some sort of game with points for killing ops and jokes about smoking on dead ops and for an outsider looking in on these drill songs like it looks kind of lit we're now even seeing increasing numbers on that the way I look at it, at the end of the day, UK gang life, street life, etc. is basically the same as US gang life, street life. But in London, it's more brutal. You gotta, you most likely gotta sometimes commit most, majority of your hits, crimes, etc. with knives, blades, whatever the case is, more than you do in the US. In the US, it's more easily to get a gun and use those in crimes and stuff and and do whatever you got to do to get your job done as far as doing a hit or committing a crime of some sort, et cetera, et cetera. But UK, I, like I said, I believe it's more brutal to be in a street gang life over there, man, because getting stabbed up and sometimes having a higher chance of surviving than it is getting shot. Yeah. That stuff definitely got me brutal. It's brutal. It's brutal. 
knife crimes outside of London, which previously didn't have any type of high numbers in crime. Because it looks cool, all these jewel rappers talking about how much money they're making and trapping, and all these girls that they're getting, while dancing around, stabbing their ops. And this actually gets to younger people's heads, like, the life actually looks appealing. But what most of these jewel rappers don't tell you about is how they can't walk around the streets or go certain places without the chance of being killed. They don't tell you about the police coming to their mum's house every week because they're a known gang member. They don't tell you about all the friends they have that are doing life for murders. And they most definitely don't tell you about them living in poverty. But guys, let me know what you guys think about why this has happened, why knife crime is going up so much recently. But guys, it's been your boy Kid Nerd and peace out. I would say it definitely plays a role with now the economies and stuff being shut down. Excuse me, and having to pretty much already sometimes probably not even be able to provide for your family majority of the time over there as well, just like it is out here. Rent and all that stuff, it don't help the it don't help the poor society at all, man. Especially with what's going on right now, with stuff being closed now and not really back to normal like it was before what happened. So. I feel like it definitely got to, a lot to do with people having more time on their hands to do stuff like this, game bang and running the streets and stuff, et cetera, et cetera. But it's a lot of factors into that, though, man. But that's pretty much the end of this video, man. If you guys enjoyed me reacting to this video, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're brand new. And, um, yeah, man, we're going to grind a 5K, man. So do what y'all got to do to help us reach that goal. And, man, I'll see y'all later on after that. Peace.